Hi everyone, welcome back to another Logic Pro how to. In today's video, we're going to be looking at how to quantize in Logic Pro. We're gonna be looking at two examples of quantization in this video. This keys one, which has more of a melodic element to it, more notes involved. That's something that I've played that's not quantized yet, but we will. And then something more that had more kind of full whole notes something like this. I wanna give two examples and you'll see later on why I give those examples. Let's first start with the keys too. So to open up quantization, we open up the editor window by pressing E or going to the scissors at the top here. And you can make it smaller or large. Now you can quantize individual notes at one, and one at each time or a group of notes by highlighting notes or highlighting all the notes by doing command A. I like to do it all at once so i do command a and then we go over here to quantization just want to explain this before i actually quantize we have strength of quantization meaning that um at 100 they the algorithm will work at 100 percent, meaning it will be very rigid and zero meaning there will be no quantization 50 will mean like it will be 50 percent of your playing and then 50 percent of the quantization algorithm to give it a bit more human feel these note values have to do with the quantization algorithm. You really just need to tell the algorithm where to push, for example, this note to. Do we push it to the nearest whole note or do we push it to the nearest half note, quarter, eighth, sixteenth? So if you don't know what these notes are, then let's talk about that for a second because you need to know that. In music, you have beats and bars, right? So these are these are bars 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So whole notes land on uh, well, they don't land, but they happen to do with the whole note of uh, of the bar. So it, it starts on 23, it starts on 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So if I quantize this chord here to the whole note, it will jump to the nearest whole note. So look here. Is the nearest whole note 22, 23, or 24? It's 23, right? That's It's because I played pretty much close to it. I was just before the beat a little bit. So if I go up here and go to whole note, it's going to jump. Oh, well, I actually didn't jump all the way there because I did a 52. So if I go to 100, it's going to push it all to there. And see if I go to zero, it pushes it back to where it was. And then if I want maybe like 90, you, you get the idea. So I can do it for all of these notes by going Command A and quantizing. But watch what happens here because if you do that, if you do it all at once like this at a whole note, then these notes here, when I'm playing, watch, listen to this chord coming in here. That step up chord isn't played on a whole note. So if we quantize this, to the nearest whole note, where do you think it's gonna jump? It's gonna jump to bar 25, right? Because that's the nearest whole note to that chord. So if I quantize that at 100%, it jumps over to 25. But we don't want that. We want it to jump to another note. We don't want the whole note. So what would that note be? I'll tell you, and I'll show you by explaining the different note values now. So we have whole notes, and just think of it like like any kind of measurement value. We have half, which are halfway between the bars, so 23.5. So still this note wouldn't be a half note because then it would jump over to this one, right? If we did half, yeah, there it goes jumping over there. So we don't want that. So let's go back to zero. Now look at the, the next one, it's a quarter. So that would be in the quarter of each bar. Here's a quarter, here's a quarter, and look, here's a quarter. So we want it to jump to that. So we go to quarter and quantize at hundred. And now that's quantize. We can do this at a whole note. And now each of these chords, are quantized and well, this one's not quantized at 100 percent now that would take a while right going through each one and then doing it right and each one and doing it and doing it so now that you know that you don't necessarily have to have the exact value for example if if we just kind of unquantize this right back to its original position if we quantize this at a quarter note it would still work, watch, because it's jumping to the nearest quarter note. Now, in that, I know if that might not make sense because I just told you that it's actually the quarter notes are in between here, but this is also a quarter note. So if I go and quantize everything at a nearest quarter note, or even a nearest eighth note, it would still work. Everything was now quantized to that nearest note that I played. So this is in perfect quantization now.
And if I wanted to bring the whole thing back, I can to give it a bit more of a human feel. Now, your human feel might not always be the best feel because, for example, I played before the beat. Unless you want that vibe, that would be a good human feel. But sometimes being played before the beat isn't always, it doesn't always give the best feeling. It does seem a bit rushed if you play before the beat. Now you know the note values of things. When in doubt, I rarely ever go like one chord or one note at a time. I usually do everything. And a rule of thumb, you can kind of think if you're new to this is if you played this MIDI and you play fairly in time, you can likely quantize at a 16th note or an eighth, like 16th might work. Now let's get into this because it didn't work. So I'll show you why. I quantized everything in a 16th note. So let's dig in, on, dig in on this. If we zoom in, this bar here at the top is a 16th note. So it actually quantized to that nearest 16th note. If I take that off, you can see where I played, right? If I zoom, zoom, zoom in even more. I'm pretty much in the middle of the 16th note, but I was, it looks like closer to this one, or maybe it pushes to the left, I'm not sure, but it goes over there, right? As soon as I bring it back up to eighth, eighth note, it's gonna bring it over here. Cause that's the nearest eighth note, right? Does that make sense? Like it's closer to this, bar which is an eighth note and not this bar because this bar is also an eighth note in that bar and i think the best way to go about learning this because as i'm saying this out loud it is it is confusing if it's the first time you're learning this because you're, you might be like what's going on but what i would recommend is start start low like 16th eighth, eighth note then take a listen and then see for example, I'll go up to eighth note again and I'll listen and see if everything's in the right place. You don't, you definitely don't want to do whole notes because then watch, then I'm missing out on the whole groove. Half notes actually kind of work as well. No, no, it doesn't work. It's too early. So a quarter note would work. And, and that works. So the idea is don't worry about messing things up. You're always going to have the ability to go up here, turn quantization off, and then you'll be back to where you played the MIDI. So you're not going to lose anything. So just command A, try things, you know, try a whole note. It doesn't matter. Try a half note, try a, a 16th note. Doing that first, you're going to get used to it. And then you'll start to learn these the values. And then you're going to get good at it. And then you'll take a look at it when you play it. And you'll be like, oh, yep, yeah, that's an eighth note. I'll go there, quantize maybe bring it down a bit and then I'm good to go. That's quantization. Let's look at this, this keys one now, opening it up. And this is a MIDI I played as well. Actually the quantization, yeah, let's turn that off. So I played this MIDI, it's different, right? There's a different cadence to it. So me looking at this, I would play, I'm playing eighth notes. So I would go command A, go to eighth notes right away, quantize at 100% and now I'm, I'm in time. And eighth notes, you can kind of think of if you've made drum patterns before, like an eighth note hi-hat pattern or a 16th note hi-hat pattern. These are exactly what we're talking about, these types of note patterns. So this is an eighth note type pattern. If I quantized at 16, notice what happens here. Actually, it's working. <laughs> Most of them are working. So these ones are a bit early. Actually, nope, they're working. So most of it's working and it is working because I played it also more to the near 16th note. So when in doubt, you're always gonna have to listen back to the quantization to see if it's in place. And sometimes what likely will happen at the beginning is you have quantized and most of it's in the right place, but then maybe one note is off. So you can go and you can click it manually and move it around, or you can quantize for example, if we go and quantize this to the nearest quarter note, it's going to go to the nearest quarter note. Eighth note would be here. Sixteenth note would be the same position. Thirty-second note and sixty-fourth note would be the same position there. I'll just bring it back there. I hope that's giving you some insight on how to quantize in Logic Pro. It's going to take some time if you're really new to quantization. The best way is just to get in it. And again, don't be afraid of moving it around. You can always moving your MIDI around. You can always turn it off and you'll be back to where you played it. It's totally fine. Like if I just go command A off, I'm back to where I played this MIDI and I'm not going to lose anything of my original composition there. So that's how to quantize in Logic Pro. Thanks for sticking around for this Logic How-To and I hope to see you in the next one.